So welcome back to Hoosier Hardware, and today we are looking at Star Wars Battlefront 2, specifically its November sales numbers, and just why this game is still a bit of a dumpster fire. Now for those of you that are a little bit out of the loop on the whole Battlefront 2 fiasco, let's get you up to speed real quick. The big complaint that people had with the rebooted Battlefront franchise, at least with Battlefront 1, was that the game, while looking beautiful, had almost no depth with no single player campaign, limited maps, and those map packs that were released later on, which you had to purchase, then fragmented the community into people that just maybe had the base game and people that were willing to invest in that DLC. So Battlefront 2 had some great marketing leading up to its launch. It was going to provide all that additional DLC for free. It wasn't going to fragment the community. And it was going to come with a single player campaign, basically making this the game that the original Battlefront, or at least the Battlefront reboot should have been. But then of course EA mucked it up the way they always do by introducing a loot crate system uh, along with a star card system in which you had to uh, use the star cards to upgrade the classes but you didn't gain XP for each class by playing the class more. You had to get those star cards just exclusively through the loot boxes but then I believe there was another in-game currency called crystals that you could buy with real money in which you could then use the crystals to buy the loot boxes which hopefully would lead to you getting the star cards you wanted and that's not even taking a look at the tens or hundreds of hours it took to get characters unlocked with the original system i believe it was 60,000 xp to get uh luke skywalker and i think it was darth vader unlocked in the original system which that was later cut down to 15,000 uh, because it was just so much gameplay to get those characters unlocked and it was clearly designed to get people to spend real money on crystals to buy loot boxes hopefully to speed up that process so fast forward to today and uh, even though ea has removed all in-game purchases at least with real currency uh, so the uh, crystal currency was completely taken out uh, Star Wars Battlefront is still a bit of a dumpster fire looking at pure physical sales for Star Wars Battlefront 2 versus Call of Duty World War 2 for the month of November does not paint a good picture for EA with Battlefront 2 only selling 882,000 copies while Call of Duty World War 2 was selling 4.4 million However, it is worth noting that World War II, that Call of Duty game, was out November 3rd, whereas Star Wars did not come out until November 17th. So if we look at just sales per day during the month of November, Star Wars Battlefront 2 actually sold 63,000 copies per day on average, whereas Call of Duty World War II sold 157,143 copies per day on average for that month. So although the raw sales indicate that for the month of November, Star Wars only sold 20% of the Call of Duty World War II uh, physical sales, the adjustment for the amount of days it was actually on the market give it, again, a slightly rosier picture at 40% of the Call of Duty World War II games uh, sold per day. But again, 40% for one of the biggest intellectual properties in the history of mankind is kind of it's disappointing to say the least and ultimately where i land on this is just that ea messed this up so badly and there was such a backlash there are plenty of gamers out there like me that just absolutely refuse to buy star wars battlefront 2 uh, because of EA's business practices. Now, even though in my mind they've actually corrected a lot of the problems that I originally had, most notably microtransactions, now the problem I think they have today is that this game was originally designed with microtransactions in mind, and now their leveling system doesn't make any sense without it because it was clearly designed to milk extra money out of the consumers, but without the microtransactions included in the game, the whole XP leveling system makes absolutely zero sense. Now I have a particular buddy that is a humongous Star Wars fan, and almost all of his complaints with Battlefront 2 do not have to uh, do at all with the actual in-game combat or anything like that. His complaints are almost exclusively with that star card system, with that leveling system. So if that is a big deal to you, then I would definitely stay away from this game. It sounds like it's still a hot mess. Uh, EA is still working on balancing issues, which is good to see. They should continue to do that. However, if you're looking for a leveling experience or a really deep, in-depth Star Wars experience, then it's probably not the Battlefront game for you. 
Although I'm sure there will be another reboot uh, down the line to hopefully try to get this right. So if the combat, on the other hand, is the only thing you're really interested in, you're not really interested in unlocking everything, you'll be more of a casual player, then this could be a really good Battlefront 2 game for you. Uh, the way I understand it, the single player game is quite good. However, it is, uh, at least from all the reviews that I have seen, somewhat predictable in its story arc but still a good story nonetheless. So in the end, good on gamers for rejecting these types of microtransaction systems, and hopefully it makes uh, game developers and game publishers a little bit more shy about adding really terrible microtransaction systems into their games in the future. Uh, if they really wanna do that, I really encourage game developers and publishers to look at Overwatch's system in which it's really only cosmetic. Yes, you can spend some serious money in Overwatch, but it, it's all cosmetic. It doesn't actually affect the gameplay, which is the big problem that Star Wars Battlefront 2 was having, was that the star cards directly impact the gameplay, and if you're willing to pump a lot of money into the game, then you will end up being a better player by virtue of you just simply having the best star cards out there. So let me know in the comments down below what you think about the whole Star Wars Battlefront fiasco. Um, is it a game that you own? Is it a game that you plan on getting? Or are you gonna hold out, hope that EA loses its license for Star Wars and that a different developer comes along and actually writes this ship? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, or comment. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag for your convenience. And also, as always, I'll let YouTube go ahead and queue up a few more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.